All right, hello guys, how's it going? Basically in this video, I'm gonna be going over my thoughts for the severe weather during the month of May of 2020. We're gonna go over why I think it could be another historic severe weather month this month as well. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do the like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Also be sure to follow us on Twitter and join our Facebook group. That'll be in the comment down below. Now for today's comment of the day, I actually wanna know, even though we're talking about severe weather, how do you think this hurricane season is going to go? Do you think we will have an above average hurricane season or do you think we will have a below average amount of hurricanes? I want to hear what you guys have to say. I'll pick one of those comments for tomorrow's video. Now, here's a look at our May 2020 one month temperature probability outlook from NOAA. And I actually agree with this. I've showed this on a few videos now and mentioned that I agree with this. Uh, we're basically going to have a horseshoe of warmth and then colder than normal temperatures basically more in the central and a little bit of the more central eastern United States there through the Ohio Valley, some portions of the deep south. So really what we look for for above average severe weather or what I do as far as climate is concerned for a month or, you know, a seasonal outlook. We, if you see warmer than normal conditions to the south and colder than normal conditions to the north, that means we will probably have an elevated amount of severe weather in between those two areas. And I mentioned that in my spring forecast. So with this May outlook, I'm looking for Texas and Oklahoma, Kansas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, and also the Deep South. This is basically a worst case scenario setup for severe weather, I believe. And I'll talk a lot more about that throughout this video. We're about to move on. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the May precipitation forecast, see if that lines up with that area where I think we would have above average severe weather. That would also elevate more of a severe weather chance. And then we'll talk about that six to 10 day outlook and the eight to 14 day outlook. And we're going to get into a whole lot more uh, throughout this video. Now, we're going to have to start going really fast because I have a lot of content to go over within this video. Here's the May 2021 month precipitation uh, probability outlook. And you can see for Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, we do have above average precipitation. Same story for Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, and then even the deep south as well. So this is really bad news. We're seeing where those two temperature areas collide and then also the higher precipitation. This is the same setup we saw in April for the deep south, except just further west. Uh, so this is really going to lead to probably more above average severe weather throughout the month of May as well. And that's my current thoughts. Looking at how April went, here's the previous 30 days. So this is actually the last four days of March and then all of April. Uh, so... Really, we had colder than normal conditions for a lot of the central United States, like what I'm talking about, but that also extended eastward to the northeast, and that's what led to a lot of the severe weather that we saw earlier in the month, like for Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas, as well as portions of the deep south. But it's as we look at the previous 20 days, which is excluding the first six days of April, this is in later April when we start to see... Uh, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina get the heart of the severe weather, even up into North Carolina, because look at where the cold to the north separates from the warmth to the south. Again, this is compared to normal, so our normal would be just white. So when it's colder than normal than what's typical to the north and warmer than normal to the south, we see a more extreme difference between the cold and the warmth than what is typically um, what's, what we're typically expecting. The opposite of it, like let's say there was cold to the, colder than normal conditions to the south and warmer than normal conditions to the north, which is actually very common as well, we would be talking about the very opposite. I would be expecting below average severe weather. All right, now we're about to move on, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the tornado so far this year, the wind and the hail so far this year, talk about basically what's happened throughout this year so far and where I expect it to tra transition to and how I expect it to change. So here's where we saw most of our tornadoes so far. Up to the north, notice that we see a lot for portions of the Ohio Valley, even Kentucky and Tennessee... Uh, Arkansas and Missouri. That was mostly earlier on in April. If you remember, we actually had a tornado outbreak up there. And also we had that day where we saw a few tornadoes for Kentucky and Tennessee, even the EF4 that hit Tennessee. That was mostly earlier on in, earlier on in the month. And then it's really transitioned further south. So that's when we started to see it hit uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and Florida. That was mostly towards the early to middle portions of the month, even pretty recently as well as early as the 20th. And then we saw it kind of transitioned and now we're starting to see some tornadoes for Texas and Oklahoma. So we're starting to see it transition a little bit further west. And I think that's going to continue as we head into May. That's very typical with a severe weather season. And I think we're going to follow suit. It's just going to be a little bit more extreme than what we're typically used to. 
Again, earlier in the season, even as far early as like December, January, February, we see the deep south, areas like Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, see most of the severe weather, and then it transitions to our more classic regions like Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, and Nebraska, and we see that happen pretty much, I would say, late April into May, and then the rest of May and early June, we could see a lot of severe weather and tornadoes for Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, like I said before. Let's take a look at where those wind is, those wind reports have been. Also, pretty much similar areas, just a lot more expanded, I guess. And then here's that hail, which has been a further west. That's very typical as well. We usually see that west of the Appalachian Mountains, we see most of the hail. East of it, it's a little more rare. Now we're about to move on and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at one more graph that's going to show us all of the tornado outbreaks so far we've had this spring. And then what I'm going to do is I'm finally going to show you a map that I made by hand actually that shows basically what we've been having in April as far as severe weather and then how I expect it to transition westward and kind of the areas that I expect to be impacted most as we head into the month of April of 2020. All right, now here's that graph I was talking about, and this is actually going to be basically our tornadoes per day. Uh, and we can see that we had one outbreak there in early January. That one was for mostly, if I can recall correctly, it was quite long ago. I think that was for Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, as well as maybe Louisiana. And I think that was a moderate risk day, and we did have actually a killer tornado in, I think it was western Alabama that day, so... Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think that's how that outbreak went. I went live that day, if I recall correctly, and then we actually had severe weather the next day as well. And then in early February, we had another outbreak as well as early March, middle March, and late March. So we had three minor tornado outbreaks in March. And then in April, you can see we had our Easter outbreak there, which is the one that spikes well above 100 tornadoes. That was a very, very major outbreak. Probably will be one of the biggest ones of the year. And then you can see uh, near the 20th of April, we had another three-day uh, tornado outbreak there as well. So we've had multiple tornado outbreaks this year. Uh, in yesterday's video, I mentioned how this tornado season actually, actually has been historic so far, and I expect that trend to possibly continue. It's really tough to say if we will be as, as active as we were, but I can show you guys where I think most of the activity is going to be. So here's where the cold temperatures were set up mostly for the month of April. And this is pretty much what people wanted to happen in the wintertime, but it didn't. It waited all the way until April till it was pretty much too late. Then the warmth was set in this orange area to the south, Texas, Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. With a lot of exceptions, sometimes the warmth would climb up the east coast and then a trough would come back through and push it back down. But this was pretty much the average locations of the cold air mass and then the warm air mass. And then in between is where we had our severe weather. Again, warmer than normal conditions to the south and colder than normal conditions to the north creates more extreme differences in the temperatures. And that's really what we look for for big severe weather days. Uh, and when that's the average of the month, that creates a lot of big severe weather outbreaks. So this was pretty much where we saw a lot of our big severe weather outbreaks take place. The Dixie Alley is what we call it, which is mostly the deep south and the southeast there. Now, I'm about to move on, and what I'm going to show you guys is where I expect that to take place during the month of May, as opposed to where we saw it take place in April. All right, and as you can see, this is, it shifted pretty far northwest, and this is where I expect most of the severe weather to take place in the month of May. Uh, we can see the cold to the north has shifted a little bit westward, and that's pretty much on par with what Noah is thinking for the month of May. And then I think that a lot of the warmth will be down there for the similar regions, but it's also going to climb up the east coast, which is going to create more severe weather potential there in Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee, as well as southern Indiana, southern Illinois. This could be outside of these regions as well. Uh, we didn't see all the severe weather in that re red region that I showed before. That's just where we saw a lot of the outbreaks take place. For instance, in this month of May, all of the outbreaks aren't going to take place in this red region that I've shown here. Not every single one will, but I do think that this is where our, some of our outbreaks will take place, and probably most of our outbreaks will be within this red region based on what is typical and also based on what I'm expecting as far as the temperature locations, like I said before. Also keep in mind, we will have above average precipitation most likely in these regions as well, which is just overall going to create a really good shot at above average severe weather. Our April forecast for where we expected the most severe weather to be set up was really, really good one. And I'm hoping to make this a, you know, second time in a row uh, with a really, really good outlook on where I expect the most severe weather to be. So take a mental note of this. We'll, we'll revisit this after May is over, but Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, Northern Louisiana, 
northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, a little bit of Georgia as well, but Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, and Missouri could get more involved. I also think areas further west like Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas are going to start to get way more involved than they were in April because they had a pretty slow April, actually, for what they're used to. Uh, I think May is going to be a completely different story there for northern Texas. Uh, We see Oklahoma and southern Kansas. Uh, All right, let's get into our comment of the day. I asked you guys, do you prefer coffee or do you prefer tea? Uh, And Richard Ferris said coffee in the morning and tea after dinner. Uh, And I think that's a really good way of putting it. Even though I drink both basically throughout the day, I'm addicted to both. Uh, But coffee in the morning is great. It's a great way to wake up. And tea, especially herbal tea later in the day is really, really nice. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.